Hi darlings and welcome to a new fashion styling video here on my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 15 clothing hacks to flatter your figure. This video is not going to be about buying anything new, it's going to be more little snippets that sometimes you might not even realise you can do, just simple changes that can make your outfits look a whole lot more flattering. So whether you want to look more flattering in pictures, whether you have a favourite pair of jeans and you just want to find some new ways of styling them that's going to enhance your figure, or maybe even you're looking for a big purchase like a wedding dress and you just want to understand a little bit more about the rules of proportion and optical illusions and things like that just to generally flatter your figure. Hopefully this video is going to be really interesting and I'm going to share everything that I know about creating a more flattering outfit. If you are new to my channel then hello and welcome. I try to do informative videos such as this mixed in with things like hauls and styling videos, lookbooks as well as things to do with my beauty routine and lifestyle vlogs so if you are new here I would love it if you subscribe and then you won't miss any of my upcoming future videos but without further ado let's get started with the first clothing hack to flatter your figure. Alrighty so the first hack is all about understanding proportions and this might sound really obvious to some but for others it's something that you may not even have considered before. The general rule is all about creating balance. Generally speaking if you're going to wear something big and voluminous on the top it could be a chunky jumper it could be a teddy bear coat as we come into autumn winter, it could be something with loads of frills and ruffles. The general rule is if you wear something big and oversized on the top then you want to balance it out with something a little bit slimmer on the bottom. The outfit that I'm wearing today is actually quite a good example because the jumper that I'm wearing is not figure hugging. Yes it's not exactly ginormous but it certainly isn't hugging my figure. I've chosen to balance it out with a pair of pretty much skin tight jeans just because if you imagine this outfit, in fact <laughs> I'll show you a picture of this outfit with some wider leg trousers. Generally it's just not as flattering because there's no balance to the silhouette of the body. On the flip side, if I'm going to wear something a bit more voluminous and large on the bottom, then you want to stick to wearing something a little bit more skin tight on the top. Again, just to create that balance. So if I'm going to wear a midi skirt or something that's not so clinging to the body, then I'll tend to opt for something a little bit tighter on the top. And as we come into autumn winter, if you're thinking about pleated midi skirts or perhaps more wide leg trousers, then you might want to consider more of a body fitting top just to balance out those proportions. Something else to consider is that areas that are smaller on the body tend to be a lot more forgiving when it comes to bulkier fabrics and bulkier design details such as pleats, ruffles, things like bows and then oversized materials such as this. But then any areas on the body which are naturally a little bit larger, such as for me it is my shoulders, I would tend to avoid wearing anything that is too dramatic in those areas and then instead stick to clean lines and things which are going to be a little bit more form fitting. My second hack is all about optical illusions and the first thing to mention here is that prints and certain fabrics can be your camouflage. If there's an area of your body that perhaps you're not quite as confident with or that you want to maybe just hide a little bit or draw the eye away from then patterns and interesting materials can be a really great way of doing so as the pattern on the fabric will draw the eye as opposed to that body part. Say for example you have got a large bust and you just don't want that to be the focus of your outfit then I would not recommend wearing a high neck top because then that whole area of expanse is just one bit of material and it can really draw the eye. Instead you want to create a little bit more interest and scatter the direction of the natural gaze. Sorry about the lighting by the way, it's one of those sunny and cloudy days. So try wearing a really bold pattern in that area or perhaps break up the area with some colour blocking or a v-neck top and you might think that would draw the eye but in fact it just kind of breaks up those areas that perhaps we don't want to draw quite as much attention to. Now I don't know about you but one of the things I like to use optical illusion for is to make myself look generally a little bit taller and not necessarily slimmer but just elongate myself a little bit especially in pictures and there are definitely some things that you can do in order to create this illusion one of which not on purpose but I'm actually doing right now and it is by wearing a necklace if you think about what draws the eye long lines really help to draw the eye up and down as opposed to side to side that's why they say things like vertical stripe outfits can be the most flattering but as well as the fabric on your clothing you can definitely use accessories and also things like scarves just to draw the eye 
up and down. Hack number three is quite a sweeping statement, but it is to generally just know your best and worst parts of your body or what you feel most comfortable showing off and maybe areas that you might prefer hiding. There's nothing wrong with admitting that there are certain areas that maybe you don't want to draw attention to, so it's good to just have those in your mind when it comes to putting outfits together. An area of my body that I think is really flatter flattering to accentuate is my waist. It's probably the smallest part of my body. That's why you'll tend to see me wearing a lot of high-waisted things, high-waisted skirts that really pinch me in around the waist, and I like to wear things that just create a little bit more of a feminine silhouette. It might be your arms, it might be a really toned tummy, it might be a really great bum, whatever it is, don't be afraid to show off the areas of your body that you love the most if you feel confident showing off those areas of the body. Then wear that tank top, wear that v-neck, wear those tight-fitting trousers, because at the end of the day it's all about showcasing what you've got. If in doubt, I find that an A-line is a really flattering silhouette for most body types. When I say A-line, it's a little bit more form-fitting on the top and then goes out like a letter A on the bottom. This is great at creating a bit of an hourglass feminine silhouette. It can pinch you in around the middle and then flares out, giving the illusion of lovely long legs and also the illusion of very slim legs as in contrast to the volume of the skirt and generally I just find it's a shape that works for so many different body types. Another kind of hack when it comes to optical illusions and especially good at this time of year is to wear your coat open and then use a belt to cinch it in around the waist. This again creates almost like a big panel in the middle where your outfit is and the coat being open just helps to give that illusion of a longer slimmer silhouette. I'm not by any stretch saying that that it's important to look slim but I would say if like me you find that it's a little bit more flattering to give yourself that slightly more elongated silhouette then I find that wearing a coat open is a really great way of drawing the eye up and down and again giving that more flattering shape. Belts in general again are a really great way of just manipulating that silhouette to create the body shape that you want. For me I absolutely love all of these fabulous dresses that we're seeing coming onto the high street right now but sometimes I find that they're just a little bit too big and bulky so something like a belt is a really great way of instantly cinching in the waist and bringing that feminine silhouette back to your body. It doesn't even need to be a traditional style belt. Something that I've been loving lately is my belt bag from Pollen. With this outfit I thought it was a little bit boring and just needed something to draw the attention back to the waist and so a belt bag was a perfect finishing touch. So play around with belts because you never know it could totally transform the look of your outfit. The next hack is to do with sizing. I would say in general if in doubt it's best to size up. I don't think it's ever particularly flattering to have any body parts looking like they're just a little bit too tight in whether that's in your trousers or whether that's in your top. Just because something goes on your body and fits doesn't necessarily mean it's the right size. I will tend to order a couple of different sizes of things like trousers if I'm unsure which size I am or if I'm between sizes and more often than not when I do wear the two one after the other I'll tend to go for the bigger size just because I don't want anything pinching, I find it uncomfortable and when you're uncomfortable you are never going to be looking your best. A particularly good example of ensuring that your clothing fits well is wide leg trousers. I absolutely love them for workwear and again especially at this time of year but personally I think wide leg trousers they need to skim the legs but they don't want to be tight around the legs. I have a pair that I'll show you on the screen here that I did size up with because the smaller pair they were just a little bit tight around the thighs and they didn't have too much movement to them whereas this pair that I've ended up keeping it just skimmed the thighs really nicely and I just have a lot more room to manoeuvre, I have a lot more movement and I'm 10 times more comfortable in this pair than the smaller pair. You don't want your clothes to be digging in and and creating things like a muffin top that's never a good look so if in doubt size up. Flattering outfit hack number seven is to have some go-to pieces in your wardrobe. We all have those days when we wake up perhaps we're late or just a little bit flustered or we're just having one of those foggy mind mornings when we can't think what to wear but if you have a few things in your wardrobe that you know flatter your body because you've worn them many times and you feel great in them then those are fantastic go-to pieces for those foggy mind mornings. If you're yet to find your perfect flattering piece, then one thing that I think is fabulous, again on so many body types, is the wrap dress. I'll pop a video clip on the screen now of one that I'm currently obsessed with from Reese, and it's just got the most beautiful pattern on it, which again is really good camouflage, great for drawing the eye away from perhaps any areas that you might want to hide. It's got a belt around the waist, so creating that lovely feminine silhouette, and it's loose and not too form-fitting on the bottom, so generally 
super super flattering, easy to wear and I think it's such a stunning design with the asymmetric hem paired with these boots, it is a current favourite outfit of mine. Something else that I think is really important to do is to regularly re-evaluate your wardrobe, whether that's every six months, every season or maybe just every year, it's important to look through and think do these pieces still represent my personal style, do they still fit me well, have I worn it recently? And how do I feel when I wear this item? Do I feel fabulous? Do I feel confident? Or do I feel a little bit self-conscious of certain areas of the body? Maybe your body has changed, maybe you've had a baby, maybe you've been going to the gym more and you want to be showcasing different parts of your body. There is no point having things in your wardrobe that don't make you feel your best. So by having regular evaluations of the items in your wardrobe, maybe if you try something on one morning and you feel like it's just no longer very you, then it's time to move it on to the charity shop so you don't have to be faced with that item every single morning. The next clothing hack is more importantly about what is underneath and it's all about choosing the right undergarments. Now I absolutely love a beautiful pretty frilly lace bra and underwear set but they are just not practical sadly for going under most of the things in my wardrobe. In autumn winter you can be a little bit more flexible because the bulky materials mean that you can't see your undergarments or the texture of your undergarments through what you're wearing but even on a day like today with what I'm wearing now I knew that I needed to go strapless. I will leave my favourite strapless bra linked down below, not the most exciting thing to share with you, but a strapless bra is something that I wear a lot of the time, even if the material that I'm wearing is just a little bit more thin and you can see through it. I just don't like to have straps getting in the way and especially over the back of the shoulder. I think it's never a good look overall to have your underwear on show, but also when it comes to your knickers, you don't want any VPLs, you don't want any crazy materials that are creating bobbly effects on your trousers, especially if you are wearing slightly more slim fitting and thinner materials on your trousers. Trousers. So make sure you've got a few pairs of invisible knickers in your collection. Again, I'll leave a few of my favourites linked down below. And then something else which I don't hear people talking about very often on YouTube is shapewear. And I think that it's got a little bit of a reputation for being not the coolest thing to wear, but shapewear can honestly make an outfit ten times more flattering. I have this ginormous pair of knickers, I don't know, I wear underwear with these as well, shapewear from a brand called Heist and these are fantastic just for creating a beautiful silhouette. If you want to tuck something in then it's fantastic to tuck them into something like this because trust me, once it's tucked in it is not going anywhere. If you're wearing a dress and you just want to have a really beautiful smooth line, if you get a little bit bloated then this just helps to just iron that all out. There are so many times that I find myself reaching for shapewear just to be the perfect finishing touch to an outfit that nobody can even see you're wearing. This brand also and I'm going to be picking up a few pairs for autumn winter, have tights which have a really flattering big waistband and I find those particularly fantastic at autumn winter time because I can tuck my thermals in and have a really smooth silhouette, perfect if you're wearing dresses or high-waisted skirts and it helps to keep you nice and snugly warm when all of your layers are tucked in together. The tenth hack that will make your clothing look a lot more flattering is to master the art of layering and I have to say layering is something which is a little bit of trial and error so my top tip would be to spend an hour afternoon in front of your mirror just playing around with different layers and when you find an outfit that you love the look of take a snap on your phone and then have that as your go-to when it comes to putting together outfits on a day-to-day -day basis. As a general rule, you want the layers that are most form-fitting to go closer to your body. If it's chilly, you might want to start with a thermal layer, then go for something form-fitting like a roll neck, then perhaps a chunky cardigan, then your gilet. The thicker the layers, the further on the outside they should be. Layering can also include things like scarves and belts, so play around with all your different accessories. Again, bearing in mind the optical illusion of creating like a slim panel down the front of your body because the right layered outfit can be so flattering so just have a play around and don't forget to just use the inspiration around you as well like Instagram and Pinterest. There are so many pictures and ideas, things that you might already have in your wardrobe that you can build up to layer the perfect outfit. Tip number 11 is all about understanding fabrics. As a general rule, I find that lighter, softer fabrics are a lot more flattering than things which are bulkier and stiffer. So when I'm talking about stiff fabrics, I mean things like uh, denims, tweeds, things that are generally a little bit more stiff. They don't tend to hang quite as well on the body, so they can just make you in general look a little bit bulkier. Whereas if you opt for things that are a lot lighter and that tend to stick a little bit closer to the body, in general they're going to be a lot more flattering because they're going to be a lot more 
form fitting. Equally, you want things to have a nice drape for them. So don't be too tempted by these fast fashion retailers that tend to have poor quality fabrics. Avoid things like polyester because that's just never going to have the same hang to it as a beautiful silk blouse or something that's made from cotton or chiffon. They're always going to hang in a much more flattering way than these cheaper, more man-made materials. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. If you do find something that is very affordable, check the fabric because this can make a huge difference as to whether the item is flattering on your figure or not. Something else you can do that's pretty easy is to use jewellery to guide the eye. So I've already mentioned using a necklace like this and even something chunkier could create a really lovely illusion of a longer torso, but you can also use jewellery as a distraction. For example, some days if I'm just having a bad skin day or if I've got a blemish that I want to draw the eye away from, that's the day that I will wear statement earrings because if someone is looking in this general area, the eye is naturally going to be more drawn to my statement earrings than the blemish on my face. <laughs> Equally, if you're having one of those days that nothing seems to look flattering on your body, you just can't find anything that makes you feel great, then opt for a statement necklace. Choose something that's going to draw the eye, that's going to have people talking and it's going to bring their eye to a certain point on your body as opposed to the look as a whole. Speaking of accessories, another thing to think about is the proportion of your handbag. If you are a little bit taller and you wear a small bag, that's just going to make you look even taller. And if you are a little bit on the shorter side, like me, and you wear a really big bag, then again, thinking of the rule of proportions, it's just going to make you look a little bit shorter. So that's definitely something to consider when it comes to handbags. If you are more petite framed, then in general, smaller bags are going to be a lot more flattering. I would suggest wearing things over one shoulder as opposed to crossbody because something crossbody just tends to break up that silhouette and ruin that streamlined silhouette that you would get otherwise. Number 14, a really easy one, is just to care for your garments. There is no such thing as a flattering outfit when the fabrics haven't been cared for. Creases are an instant no-no in my books. Equally, if something needs to go to the tailors, if it's starting to look a little bit bobbly, these are things that you can easily do at home or relatively affordably get fixed. Something that I always recommend is the purchase of a steamer. I've got a full size one and also a little travel one and I use these every single day even on wools but especially on silks and lighter materials. It's so much more flattering to have an outfit that's perfectly steamed and pressed than something that's got creases which is just never going to be a good look. And my final tip for a flattering look is to have a polished skincare and hair care routine. You can have the most flattering outfit in the world, you can take on board all of these tips, but if you've not brushed through your hair or your hair is not clean or you've not taken care with your skincare that morning or that week in fact, it can instantly bring down the whole look. And by no means does this mean you have to go out and spend a fortune on your skin and hair care, absolutely not. Sometimes simplicity is the key. I always I'm always recommending some really lovely affordable skincare pieces. I'll leave my blog link down below in case you want some up-to-date recommendations. But if you're just not feeling your hair that day, there is nothing more chic and flattering and polished than a low bun, a big pair of statement sunglasses, and you are ready to face the world. So darlings, those are my tips for creating a flattering outfit. I'd love to know if you agree, if you have any other tips that you'd like to add in here, or your general thoughts on what makes an outfit more flattering. Let me know in the comments section down below. So I hope you enjoyed the video, darlings. If you did, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.